Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. And today we look about sealing a bottle to prevent the content from evaporation. And therefore, I have a box with a parafilm here on my cask. We come to this point later. Yes, how to protect the content of your bottles. What's the main danger? Well, <laughs> losing liquid from your bottles typically has to do with the thirst of a third person. Yes, uh, we had a complaint from a customer and he had a small cask in his cellar and he said, well, it's evaporating so so much whiskey every week. It's incredible how fast <laughs> the level is going down. And uh, after some time, uh, he came back to us and said, well, no blame on the cask, on the cooper, on the cask manufacturer. His children were drinking at that cask. Well, and there are those uh, uh, persons probably in your household which are cleaning your household for money. Well, thirst is also probable <laughs> with those people and therefore uh, some people uh, take a pen and uh, put a small mark on the back to see if the level is going up or down. But uh, alcohol has a uh, expands a lot and contracts when it's, when it's cold and expands when it's warm. I filled a bottle up to the top to here at room temperature and then I put it outside at freezing, below freezing temperatures and uh, the level went down that much. So if you put a mark on your bottle in the evening when it's warm in your uh, living room and then you look at the bottle in the morning when it's cold, the chimney has ceased, everything is cold and clam. And then you look at your bottles, it's a little bit lower. So whiskey contracts when it becomes cold. And uh, be careful, uh, some thirsty persons uh, know where uh, the cleaning liquids are and they are able to remove your pen from the glass and then they will know where your pen is and they will put a new mark. So better you take the, the ring, the ring of your wife with a diamond in it and you make a scratch at your bottle to see where the level is. Um, so if you have this permanent marks on your bottle then <laughs> The thirsty person uh, may add water. So you might uh, look at the strength of your whiskey uh, and put those sp <laughs> spindle in here and look at the ABV which is still in the bottle. Uh, because it's a slow process adding a little water after each time, uh, the color might get lighter. So this is also something you have to look after. Um, okay, enough for this. Um, what to do if you opened a bottle, says, wonderful, I put it uh, in my stock for the next 10 years. If the bottle is not open, but it's closed, it's even more difficult because everything you do to the bottle may harm your selling price. So if there's something on top of this, some wax, some seal, uh, and it's not original, then the buyer will say, hmm, I don't trust you. What's in those, this bottle? I can't believe that's the uh, original content. So you have to keep the original capsule on top here and you're not allowed to, to harm this capsule by wax or some other seal. Um, if it's already open, then you're free to do what you what you want because it's your bottle. You won't sell an open bottle. It's yours. Um, all bottles breathe through the cork. 
because the cork is not uh, is not a homogeneous material. There are pores in it. Uh, there are some cracks in it, uh, and if a crack uh, lies at the outside, then air will directly move from the inside to the outside and vice versa. Otherwise, it has to go through the, the porous material. It takes a little bit more of time, but still, uh, air is still able to pass. Um, in a year, it's quite a very, very small amount. So in a year, I don't care about an open bottle. But if you have, I know somebody who has over 150 open bottles in his bar and he has a problem because he's drinking, let's say, five bottles a year. So <laughs> there are bottles for 50 years in his bar and he has to protect the content uh, against evaporation and uh, the change of the uh, taste because uh, if oxygen enters the bottle this will lead to a stronger uh, oxidization of the content. If the whiskey is already very old and it's laid 30 years in a cask then the uh, oxidization had taken place inside the cask because if the uh, the level inside the cask uh, is going down over the years then cracks open uh, between the staves and at the end and then uh, evaporation is very or is more intense uh, you can if you have a bottle uh, which does not taste very well open the bottle put it in your bar mark the bottle or the the level and then wait for a week, for two, for three, for four weeks and look uh, how much you lose. It's not that, that much uh, what you think at first. It takes quite a time until uh, the evaporation is really visible. And this takes place inside the casks also. So there is a lot of oxidization going on in the casks in an old whiskey. Or has gone already. Um, but when the whiskey is young and if the whiskey is smoky because smoke results from phenols and they result from a uh, non-optimal combustion of the peat. So there are non-oxidized or not fully oxidized, oxidized compounds in the smoke of the peat. These uh, finish in the bottle and over the upcoming years oxidization is moving forward and those uh, unoxidized compounds will fully oxidize over the year, over the years. So uh, peated whiskey always tend to lose its peatiness over the years. And if you have a 30 year old Beaumont or a black Beaumont like this one, um, then the peat has, or the peat smoke has reduced a lot and you got other compounds, very aromatic, very complex aromas due to this oxidization over the four, more than 40 years in the cask. Um, the more air is in the bottle, the more oxidization takes place. So if you have a, a last drop in your bottle, just finish it. Don't say, oh, I keep it for next year, for next Christmas, and, and, and. Uh, no. If, you, if your level goes down to a third or a fourth, then hurry up. Better to finish the bottle uh, than to look at the taste and say, well, it has changed. The older the whiskey is, the less worry you have to have because oxid oxidization had already taken place. Then you still have the lose of volume by evaporation through the cork. Um, you may add, if this is a valuable whiskey and you want to keep it for a longer period, then it might be sensible uh, to add these inert gas like nitrogen. Add the gas, it's, it's more heavy than air, it's heavier than air. So you add the nitrogen and then if the bottle uh, breathes, the whiskey breathes, uh, it's just moving air up on the top and the heavy nitrogen protects uh, the whiskey down in the bottle. 
but this is only possible if it's a an open bottle. So, uh, all other bottles you have to to seal, and uh, I have for this purpose uh, a product called Parafilm. It's a uh, uh, what's that here? It's it's a plastic. It's polyurethane or whatever, polyethylene. I don't know. Uh, this parafilm is flexible, moldable, self-sealing, odorless, very important, moisture-resistant. So no water is passing. Thermoplastic, semi-transparent, practically colorless. And inside this box, it's four inches wide and 125 feet long. It's quite expensive. It's about 30, 40 uh, dollars a box. And you can see here those chemical glasses sealed with this parafilm. So this is from the, uh, from the laboratory uh, supply. So I take a piece of this parafilm And with this parafilm, you can see, uh, you can tear it apart in both directions, it will become longer. Put it on top, so it's self-sealing, but this is good in the upper part, but not so good here in the, in the lower part, uh, so we take another piece of this parafilm, smaller one, looking like this, I tear it long and then I put it around I'm not very experienced in this task because I never do this so my bottles do not rest longer than a few months in my bar. But here you can see it is quite fixed. It's sealed. You have to be sure to cover uh, quite a piece of glass because the parafilm uh, is self-adhesive uh, on the glass and this will seal uh, the air from the inside to the outside. Uh, it's also very uh, terrible and formable so that you also can uh, fix those complicated corks on top of these bottles. Hope that helped. Thank you very much for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your whiskey collecting friends.